Opening song is the complete opposite tone from the scene it's playing over, which lets us know right away how this movie will go. Deadpool creator drinks Starbucks. No one's safe from Deadpool's wrath, except for the studios. Consider the fourth wall broken. What else the whole world tastes like Mama June after hot yoga? I'm not gonna get too deep into the pop culture references. They're there, we heard them, they're funny. I will, however, defend certain specifics. Feel free to correct me in the comments if I'm wrong, but Mama June is already culturally irrelevant, no? So you either get it or you don't. I never watched Honey Boo Boo. Point is, I still got the joke. And in case you didn't, Dopinder didn't either. If you don't get the intention of the joke by the context, I can't help you people 50 years in the future. Yes, I can go all day, Dopinder. The point is, it's bad. Get it? Deadpool doesn't care either way. Someday I'd like someone to explain Adventure Time to me. Oh, hello. I know, right? All right, now consider your fourth wall broken. And I'm so glad they did. You can bet that this was one of the biggest hesitations for the studio, but it was executed perfectly. Maximum effort. Awesome catchphrase, which is either a cue to start his music, or more likely it's a statement about Deadpool as a whole. He lives his life about as lazily as he can, but when it comes time for revenge, saving his girlfriend, or doing otherwise superhero type stuff, he needs to talk himself up. I'd say this would take maximum effort, and I love it as the first superhero thing he does. Anybody else get an 80s beat it vibe from this part of the score? Reveling in a job well done. And this whole car fight chase scene is exhilarating and funny at the same time. Which benefits the matching unitards? The house that blows up every few years? Meta jokes from non-Deadpool character. <sighs> Remind me never to do two R-rated movies in a row again. Especially when 90% of the jokes in one of them contains things I need to censor. Bad Deadpool. Seven. Good Deadpool. Bouncing back. Someone's not counting. And here I thought Archer was the only guy with that skill. <laughs> Brutal. And there's your hard R everyone's going to be poaching for the next few years. Let's just talk about the care that went into this character. The way the mask had to be built stopped Reynolds' facial movements from really coming through. So scenes where Deadpool had to emote facially, they shot it twice. Once with the mask on, and once with the mask off. And the final product is astounding. Deadpool has to be one of the most fun comic book characters we've ever seen. He's willing to self-deprecate, and he really just enjoys life. I don't have a cat. Then whose kitty litter did I just get in? Anywho. <laughs> I felt. Honoring the creator of Deadpool. Meeting new and exciting people. And then, uh, Killing them. Yeah, I've seen your Instagram. Bold move to pull lines from Deadpool's other appearance, and I love it. The Deadpool has a veritable smorgasbord of celebrity death wishes. From our two main characters, to Mike Tyson, Amanda Bynes, Lindsay Lohan, and even Bill Cosby. Also, Reynolds is one year younger than Wade. Maybe about 48 minutes of whatever the f*** you want. Flipping the we just met let's have sex cliche on its head. Also gives us a look at the softer, dare I say, redeemable side of Wade. Limited edition, Voltron. Again, Voltron hasn't been relevant since the 80s. If it doesn't now, how's it ever gonna feel dated? A year-long uh, canoodling montage is the fastest way to celebrate the holidays. Oh, Star Wars jokes. Empire. Everyone loves a nerd correction, but I think he was speaking of the overall saga. It's like I made you in a computer. But more 80s references with weird science. <laughs> Got him. I think we can all agree that just went sideways in the most colossal way. Well, maybe not the most. Take that, Fox! I don't know. Might further the plot. It does. Negasonic Teenage Warhead. That's the coolest name ever! Compliments. Negasonic Teenage Warhead, can we trade names? <clears throat> can we go? They really got Deadpool's crazy detachment perfect. I love how he continues the conversation while still messing with Ajax. All the dinosaurs feared the T-Rex. McAvoy or Stewart. These timelines are so confusing. He's not wrong. When Colossus and Negasonic were leaving the school, I found myself wondering where we were in the timeline and why Xavier's school wasn't teeming with people like it is at the end of Days of Future Past. And please don't make the super suit green. Or animated. Take that, DC! So is Marrow the gratuitous cameo? A uh, torture montage is the fastest way to becoming Deadpool. Well, so your pretty mouth shut. Oh. I wouldn't do that if I were you. Fire extinguisher fight. Bet you can't say you've seen one of those before. <laughs> Brutal. Really throwing the last nail in the coffin on why Deadpool hears voices and talks to imaginary friends. Tortured, montage style, left in a state of just enough oxygen to stay alive for a weekend, and now he's trapped with a piece of rebar through his chest to burn to death. Only, he can't die. You like what you see? No. Honesty. You look like an avocado had sex with an older, more disgusting avocado. Yeah. Not gently, like it was hate 
there was something wrong with the relationship. Over explaining avocado coupling. Captain Deadpool. That's like a franchise. Correct. A Killing Goons montage is the fastest way to finding Francis. Man, is this really the third montage? Holy crap. I somehow missed that the first few times through. He jumps on his sword and splits that guy in half. I take all my other brutals back. Brutal. Fourth wall break inside a fourth wall break. That's like 16 walls. Math lessons. Creepiest baby hand on an adult is somehow a win. I refuse to explain it. Obligatory R-rated movie strip club scene does something a little different by throwing Stan Lee in there. A collecting guns montage. You get the point. I'd go with you, but I don't want to. Wow, that's like real honesty. But I got such a good heart hey. that I'm... Where's your duffel bag? What makes this even more epic is that the reason Wade ends up leaving the ammo bag in the cab is because of budget cuts, which directly led to the sword massacre we were given instead. We'll get a tiger. All right. Negasonic Teenage Warhead isn't so bad after all. <laughs> yep. So the guy who did the mocap for Colossus, one of five actors it took to bring Colossus to life, was a 6'9 big dude. And even if I was almost seven feet tall like him, I still wouldn't want to mess with Gina Carano. Bob? Hydra Bob? Wait, no. Wrong studio. Whoa. Whoa. Chivalry. <laughs> Shattering the glass. Steel ceiling. Teamwork. When I'm finished, I also have to grow back here. Good one. Yep, that was a good one. To be fair, he'd been working that burnout for quite a while. Hey, Khan. Not if there's nothing left of him to heal. I praised Man of Steel for showcasing two unbreakable aliens kicking the snot out of each other. And now I'm going to give Deadpool those same props for giving us an unkillable dude versus numb dude. And it's super fun. Every blow doesn't need to be parried because number one, it's R, and number two, they can't die. <laughs> Yep. As raw as a born fight, but with superhuman reflexes and strength. And throw another brutal on the Barbie. Good enough reason as any to believe in love. As priceless and hilarious as this scene is, it's also totally believable and pertinent. If someone who couldn't die had been stabbed in the brain, he'd probably have a few auditory and visual hallucinations. Definitely not a shield helicarrier. Marvel Studios definitely shouldn't sue. Seriously, don't. Find a way to work together, guys. Come on, can't we all just get along? and share our multi-billion dollar properties with each other. I mean, guys, come on. The way the world sees us, the way we... Generally over here at Cinema Wins, I tend to champion heroistic actions like saving your friends, showing mercy, or my favorite, self-sacrifice. And while Colossus's, Colossus? Col Colossus? Colossus's speech is moving, Wade has made it very clear what he is and what he isn't. I am no hero. My hero. No, 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 that I ain't. It's weird. Superhero tights. I mean, sparing psychopaths, and maybe I wasn't meant to wear them. So you live in a house. Call back. That's all right. You're cool. More compliments. Love. Wham. Wade would agree. Wham, and specifically Careless Whisper, is always a win. The way I dance with you. Oh. And who knew Ryan Reynolds could sing? Gosh darn it, I love this movie. Super fun action fight scenes, main characters with fleshed out motivations, and it's uproariously funny throughout. A movie that almost didn't get made because how could you possibly sell an unapologetically foul mouth, violence glorifying, fourth wall breaking gun for hire? Exactly like this. This is how. Tim Miller and Ryan Reynolds did it. Anyone who complained about a paper thin plot and generic villain kind of missed the point. Deadpool exists in this world. He didn't create it. He comments on it, sure, but he's as responsible for the plot of this movie as he is whether or not McAvoy is bald in Apocalypse. Or why Tom Hardy was bald in Nemesis. What was with that? That always bugged me. The simplistic plot and cookie cutter villain are entirely deliberate. You think four montages was a mistake? There needed to be contrast between Deadpool's wit and criticism and the typical comic book character narrative. I won't be surprised if the plots are kept fairly basic going forward as well because they'll likely never be the focal point of a Deadpool film. Deadpool is. We watch the movie with him while he picks it apart. He's the star. To try to do something completely different with his origin story would have been a misstep. Deadpool needs to bounce off of landmarks and cliches that we can all commiserate with. And the same goes for the villain. Again, at the very least in the first film. I mean, he's introduced with a half-eaten apple in his hand. My converse will have plenty to say about that. And as far as I'm concerned, devoting the first half of the film to Wade's origin story interspersed with the bridge, chase, fight, X-Men scene was perfectly entertaining and engaging. Ryan Reynolds is clearly the quintessential cast for Deadpool. I bet a whole bunch of comic readers have started giving Deadpool Ryan's voice in their head when they read. He's that good. He was born to play this role. Plan ends with the wrong guy getting dismembered! 
Marina Bacharin is the other really standout character, but TJ Miller was funny as usual and both added a lot to this movie. Yeah. I'm psyched for the sequel, and I hope it does turn into a franchise. Sadly, the one thing that Hollywood has seemed to take away from it is to just make everything R. Hopefully that doesn't get too out of hand. Wolverine always should have been R, beyond that, not everything needs an R rating from here on out. But it is kind of nice to have the door opened like this. I wouldn't expect any MCU movies to go down that path. Some things just don't make sense with an R rating. Like if they decided the real problem with the good dinosaur was that it just wasn't gory enough. And there just wasn't enough cursing or hot animated dino on dino action. Although you definitely bring in a completely different audience. It might just work. Eh, worth a try I guess. Who f cares?